Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you again today. Welcome to Worship and the Word with us here at Church of the True Vine. Let's turn straight away to the Word of God this morning. Psalm 146 says, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not Put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man, in whom there is no help. His spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and widow, but the way of the wicked he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful exhortation. Don't trust in men. Don't trust in men, no matter how influential, no matter how powerful they might be, because men will pass away. But the Lord is forever. The Lord is eternal. And he is the one who keeps justice, who gives food to the hungry. We can trust in him at all times times make that your aim in 2023 to trust in the Lord and to follow him with all your heart we're going to be worshiping him together in a moment we're going to be singing that great great old hymn here is love vast as the ocean as we focus on the wonderful love of God who so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But we place our trust in him and we're also praying today. We're praying to this God who is wonderful, who is eternal, who is all powerful, who is almighty and who loves us and whose plans and whose purposes ultimately will all come to pass. We're praying today for our brothers and sisters in the nation of Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is a nation where Christians are persecuted for their faith. And so I'm gonna to read to you from the World Watch List booklet regarding what it has to say regarding what life is like for Christians in Kazakhstan. Christian freedom in Kazakhstan is severely restricted under legislation dating back to September 2011. Surveillance, raids on meetings, fines and arrests are part of the fabric of Christian life, with the authorities using the threat of Islamic extremism to tighten its control on religious freedom. The past year has seen a number of believers face fines for selling Christian literature and objects. Christians from Muslim backgrounds also face opposition from family, friends and neighbours. They could face house arrest, beatings or expulsion from the community. So please join with us in a little while as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Kazakhstan. And of course, we continue to pray regarding this appalling conflict in Ukraine, praying that this war will come to an end. So please join with us as we pray regarding that situation. But as I said, let's turn our attention now to our great, loving, wonderful God, to our Lord Jesus Christ, who willingly laid down his life for us on the cross. Let's sing together. Here is love, vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood, when the Prince of Life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood. God bless you as we worship the Lord together today. Here is love as 
just as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood, when the prince of life are ransom, shed for us his precious blood. reading this morning from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning at verse 11, where Jesus is speaking to the multitudes and he says, Assuredly, I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, and if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus uses a very strange expression here in verse 12. He says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. It's a strange expression. The one thing we don't tend to think of is the kingdom of heaven suffering violence. But to really understand what is being said here, we need to understand the language that Jesus is using. The language that Jesus is using here is actually the language that describes a city under siege. So Jesus is saying effectively, ever since John the Baptist appeared on the scene, the kingdom of heaven has been like a city under siege and the violent take it by force. Any military strategist, any military historian, anyone who has studied these things will tell you that to besiege a city is a momentous effort. You have to really be determined to besiege a city. You have to be prepared to put in the time. You have to be prepared to put in the cost. You have to be prepared to put in everything that is necessary to besiege that city. It's a long process. It's a costly process. It's an exhausting process. And it, and, and it, it can take a long, long time until either the, the, the people under siege 
surrender because they are uh, starving or because disease has got into the city or whatever it is but it's a long long process it takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of involvement it takes a lot of of investment in order to besiege a city and that means that you've really really got to want to take that city you see there are only two reasons why you would besiege a city one is because a city is of great strategic importance whoever controls the city controls the land the other is that there is something inside that city that is so valuable so precious so important that you will stop at nothing to enter in to that city and take what is in that city that's what jesus is saying here he's saying the kingdom of heaven is like that besieged city you have to see that in the kingdom of heaven there is something so precious so valuable so wonderful that you would be those who would stop at nothing to enter in. But he says it's until, it's since the days of John the Baptist, from the days of John the Baptist until now, that this has been going on. Why is this the case? Why is it from the days of John the Baptist that the kingdom of heaven has suffered this violence and forceful men are laying hold of it? Well, throughout the Old Testament, the prophets had been speaking of one who was to come, that the kingdom of heaven was not going to come through a religious system, but the prophets were speaking of one who was to come. You read through Isaiah, you read through Jeremiah, you read through Ezekiel, you read through all of the prophets. There are all of these clues, all of these hints, all of these types, all of these shadows proclaiming that Messiah is to come, that the one who ushers in the kingdom of heaven on earth is to come. And then John the Baptist appears in the wilderness crying out he's saying he's come he's come he's come he is the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the lord and thousands 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 of people have come flocking from all around judea all across the land of israel to receive the baptism that john gives this baptism is described as a baptism of repentance repentance means to change your mind it means a turning around it means getting right before god it means saying i want to be clean from sin so that i can receive the kingdom of heaven that is what thousands of people have come flocking to john for this one who is the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the lord and then it tells us in john's gospel chapter one and verse 29, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is preferred before me, for he was before me. I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore I came baptizing with water john sees here jesus the lamb of god john sees jesus and he said this is the one that i've been speaking about thousands had come to john to receive to be made ready for the coming of the one who was to come and now that one stands before john and john says behold the lamb of god this is he of whom i was speaking the violent take hold of the kingdom of heaven by force. These people were prepared to stop at nothing to get right before God. And then Jesus comes and we know that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. We know that Jesus came for one reason and one reason only. He came to lay down his life for us so that we can receive the gift of everlasting life and enter in to the kingdom of heaven through him. But the same principle still applies. The people who came flocking to John, the people who would stop at nothing to receive the benefits of the kingdom of heaven, to get right before God, they were those who were willing to travel 
hundreds of miles. They were willing to leave behind their homes, to leave behind their businesses, to leave behind their farms, to leave behind that which they had until this point considered precious to come to the River Jordan and receive that baptism of repentance so that they would be right when the kingdom of heaven came. We have to have the same attitude today regarding the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Jesus said, what does it prosper a man to gain the whole world, yet lose his soul? Everything else compared to the kingdom of heaven has to be as nothing in our eyes. We have to be those who will settle for nothing less than the kingdom of heaven. We have to lay aside everything that is not of the kingdom of heaven. We have to lay aside everything that would get in the way. We have to lay aside everything that would take our preference. We have to lay aside everything in order to enter in to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, if anyone would follow me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. That means that every day there is a challenge for us. Which is it going to be? Is it going to be the kingdom of me or is it going to be the kingdom of heaven? What is going to be the most important thing in my life? It's only in the kingdom of heaven that you will find everlasting life. It is only in the kingdom of heaven that you will find peace. It is only in the kingdom of heaven that you will find love that is so perfect that it would lay down his life for you. It is only in the kingdom of heaven that we find freedom from sin. It is only in the kingdom of heaven that we find freedom from the fear of judgment and torment it is only in the kingdom of heaven but we have to lay everything else aside in the same way as they came and laid siege to that city we have to be those who will invest everything everything for the kingdom of heaven in luke's gospel chapter 18 Jesus told a parable, the parable of the persistent widow. Let's just turn there for a moment. Luke 18, beginning at verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city and she came to him saying, get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Note that phrase, by her continual coming. She effectively laid this judge under siege. She said, I'm not going until I've got what I want. I'm not leaving this. I'm not stepping foot anywhere else but in the judge's presence until I have got justice from my adversary. She laid that judge under siege until she got what she wanted. Everything else went by the by. Nothing else mattered. She wanted justice. She got justice. Why? Because it was only from the judge that she was going to get the justice she sought. It's only in the kingdom of heaven that you are going to find peace with God. It's only in the kingdom of heaven that you are going to receive everlasting life. Lay aside everything else. In 2003, lay aside everything else. Settle for nothing less than the rule of the kingdom of heaven in your life. Settle for nothing less than the glory of God in your life. Settle for nothing less than the presence of Jesus in your life. Settle for nothing else but the truth of God's word in your life. Don't compromise. Don't, don't be slack off. This is a year when we need to press in to the things of the kingdom of heaven. We need to lay hold of the promises of God. Remember that every promise, whatever God has promised, finds its yes and its amen in Christ Jesus. We need to be those 
in 2023 who have that attitude i will settle for nothing less i will settle for nothing less in the kingdom of heaven there is great reward in the kingdom of heaven there is great joy in the kingdom of heaven there is health and healing and wholeness in the kingdom of heaven there is an inheritance for you and for me but let's not settle for anything less if you need healing get hold of the promises of god for healing don't settle for well i'll just have to put up with it lay hold of the promise of god if you need provision in your life don't just think well i just need to see if i can make do no lay hold yes you put things in place so that you can get your finances in order and so on but lay hold of the promises of god for provision pray them in that god the lord is my shepherd i shall not want why should you settle for poverty i'm not saying about being filthy stinking rich that's not what i'm saying but why settle for poverty poverty is a curse get hold of the promise of god the lord is my shepherd i shall not want i was young but now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken nor their children begging for bread the word of god has not changed so don't settle for anything less than what the word of god tells you is yours in christ jesus besiege the city besiege the city lay hold by force settle for nothing less even if it means laying down your life do not let go of the kingdom of heaven even today around the world men and women are laying down their lives for the kingdom of heaven for the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because they know that in Jesus Christ, in the kingdom of heaven, is their only hope, is their only salvation. Let's not let them down. Let's pursue righteousness. Let's pursue the kingdom of heaven. Let us be those who in 2023 lay hold by force the kingdom of heaven and all that is within. And now let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus because you have told us that we may ask anything in the name of Jesus and it will be done father we pray today on behalf of our brothers and sisters in Kazakhstan Lord we pray that you would enable them to stay strong in the face of the persecution that they have to deal with father we pray especially for those who have been fined for christian activities lord we pray that you would meet their every need lord we pray for those who have been expelled from families expelled from communities that they would find a place of safety they would find a place where they can grow and live a life of freedom we pray lord that you would enable our brothers and sisters in that nation to be bold in their witness to help them, Lord, to preach the gospel, even in the face of everything that they are having to deal with. Lord, we pray that you would turn the hearts of the governors of that nation, that they would see the valuable contribution that Christians can bring to their nation. And that they would change the way things are. They would change laws in order to allow Christians more freedom in that land. Lord, we pray that you would enable our brothers and sisters to keep their eyes fixed on you, that you would provide for them, you would help them, you would give them wisdom to deal with every situation. We pray that they would know your love, your peace and your joy, your presence with them in every circumstance. And Father, we do pray 
Lord, you tell us that we should always pray and never give up. So we pray again regarding this war in Ukraine. You are the God who makes wars to cease to the ends of the earth. And so we ask you, Heavenly Father, to bring this war to an end, to make this war to cease. We pray that there would be peace in Ukraine, that those whose lives have been shattered would be able to rebuild. We pray especially for all those on either side who have lost loved ones, that they would know your comfort, the comfort that only you can give. Lord, we pray that this war would come to an end, that lives would be spared. Lord, we pray that it would not just be peace at any cost, it would be peace with righteousness prevailing. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us today. It's been great to share this time together with you. I simply want to say something to anyone who is watching this. Maybe you've stumbled across this. Well, let me tell you, you haven't stumbled across this. God has led you to this video presentation. Why? Because Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. If you don't know Jesus, if you don't know that your sins are forgiven, if you are not a citizen of the kingdom of heaven, then today you can make that decision. Today you can enter in to a relationship with God, the maker of heaven and earth, your heavenly father who loves you so much that he gave his son to die for you on the cross. First of all, you have to acknowledge that you are a sinner, that you have strayed from the path that God chose for you. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And in Isaiah chapter 53, it tells us we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. So there's no getting out of it. There's no loophole there. All means all. But you have to acknowledge that before God and recognize that it's impossible for you to save yourself. That's why Jesus came, because it was impossible for us to save ourselves. So you have to acknowledge that you are a sinner before God. You have to acknowledge that you cannot save yourself, but then come to Jesus, the one who willingly laid down his life so that we can enter in to everlasting life. The Bible says, that if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then you will be saved. Saved from sin, saved from the power of sin over your life, saved from the, 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 the curses that have come upon your life, saved from condemnation, saved from judgment. You have to come to Jesus. You have to believe that he is risen from the dead and you have to confess him as Lord. That means that from this day on, you have to declare, Lord, I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. I need to be saved. Lord Jesus, I thank you. You died on the cross so that I can be saved. I believe that you are risen from the dead and I confess you as my Lord. I choose to make you my Lord and to love you and to follow you and to serve you, not myself, not the ways of this world, but to follow and serve you from this moment on for as long as I live with your help. If that's you today, then we're going to simply pray a prayer. Praying this prayer in itself will not save you. You have to believe that Jesus is risen from the dead and you have to turn your life over to him. You have to die to yourself and make him Lord. In that, in that decision comes that entry into everlasting life. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I acknowledge that I have hurt others. I acknowledge I have hurt myself. I acknowledge I have gone my own way instead of your way. And I acknowledge that I cannot save myself 
from my sin or from the consequences of my sin. I need to be saved. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for all the things that I have done, said or thought wrong. I'm sorry for hurting others. I'm sorry for hurting those that I love that I don't even know. I'm sorry, Lord, for the hurt and the pain that my sin has caused. I thank you, Jesus, that you died on the cross for me. I didn't deserve you to die on the cross for me. I deserved that death myself. But I thank you, Jesus, you died for me. And I thank you, Jesus, that you are risen from the dead and you are able to save anyone who will call on your name. Lord Jesus, I call on your name today. I believe you are risen from the dead and I ask you today to become the Lord of my life. From this day forward, Jesus, I confess you as Lord. I ask you to forgive me my sin, to wash me clean and to give me that brand new start. And to fill me with your Holy Spirit, to enable me to live the life that you have for me. I surrender everything to you, Jesus. May it be your will, not mine. From this day forward, you are my Lord. Thank you for saving me. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer today and you've really meant it, then Jesus will have heard that prayer and he will have stepped into your life. He will have become your Lord, your Saviour right now. You are saved. I would just ask you to do one thing and that is very simply to get in touch. We would love to pray with you, to help you, to support you in whatever way we can. So please just get in touch. If you're anywhere in the Clevedon area, we meet at the community centre on Prince's Road at 1030 on a Sunday morning. So please come and join with us. If you need to get in touch first because it's a, an alien thing for you, then do and we will make it as easy as possible for you. But we just want to help you and support you as you begin this exciting new life in Jesus Christ. If you're not in the Clevedon area, you can still get in touch. Let us know what you have done. Jesus said, if you will confess me before men, then I will confess you before my Father in heaven. So get in touch. We would love to hear from you and pray with you and help you in whatever way we can, wherever you are in the world. And of course, we're back here on YouTube at the same time next week. That is 10 a.m. That's UK time next week so until then may god bless you may god keep you may god grant you favor and may god give you peace in all things and in all ways until next week god bless you bye bye